everyone. Welcome to this week's three things I uh, learned last week. You know the drill by now. This is my weekly show where I talk about three things that I learned last week I think are really, really cool and I want to tell you about. In all truth, it's not necessarily always three things I just learned last week, but things that I read more and more about and I like to bring to you, my audience. So this week, we're going to be talking about um, LinkedIn's social selling index, the truth about social media and SEO, and some interesting things about Apple's new operating system 15 um, related to email marketing. Um, so first and foremost, I want to get into LinkedIn social selling index. I gave a presentation last week for the uh, Legal Marketing Association Digital and Social Media SIG on what you wish you knew about social media and SEO. And uh, both of the first two things I'm going to talk about today were two of the biggest topics in that presentation. And it was interesting to me, the number of people who um, hadn't heard about LinkedIn social selling index and hadn't heard some of the things I was sharing with them about um, social media and SEO. So I thought I'm going to bring it to this audience at large, and hopefully I will impart some knowledge and impart some interesting things I've, I've learned about recently. Um, to start, LinkedIn social selling index is a score from one to 100, and it's based on your activity on LinkedIn in four areas. It has to do with your profile quality, the quality of your connections, the quality of your content, and your platform activity, in particular searching. So have you established your, your personal brand? Have you completed your profile? Make sure all of those sections are not just complete, but also updated regularly. And then are you connecting with the right people, in particular VP level and above, um, from everything I'm reading, gets the, the most love on the, uh, related to the social selling index. But are you making meaningful connections on LinkedIn? And are you sharing insights with those connections? And are you engaging with their content? I'm sure all of us has heard from a LinkedIn trainer before about all of these things. This is actually the reason why behind, you know, why do you need a great profile? Why do you need to be engaging on LinkedIn? So why does it matter? I, I love answering the why question. Um, according to LinkedIn, the social selling index, the higher the social selling index, I should say, the more opportunities um, and increased revenue a sales leader brings in. So, okay, most of my connections relate to law firms and law firms don't typically have sales teams, but the lawyers at law firms are the firm's primary business developers. So we can apply these same concepts to lawyers BD efforts. And uh, one article I read outlined this application for Microsoft. So Microsoft tracked their sales teams, SSIs, and found that highly engaged sellers, people who were putting all of these concepts into practice very effectively, saw a 38% increase in opportunities, new opportunities, whether with new connections or established connections that are just um, noticing their sales development team uh, activity on LinkedIn. And for every 10 point increase in SSI, that equaled 4.3 more real world opportunities. I myself um, have been working, I'm sure anybody who's following me on this LinkedIn Live knows that I am active on LinkedIn. I try and post every day, almost every day if I can. And I myself have actually seen this concept put into practice, the number of opportunities from connections that I might just recently have known or have known for a long time, but my activity, my presence, my connection quality, my engagement on LinkedIn are helping drive those new opportunities. So um, one article I read talked about SSI as a heart rate monitor, because this is not the be all end all. So, you know, certainly being active on LinkedIn, being present and engaged on LinkedIn is important. But the heart rate monitor is a great analogy. You need um, it is a strong indicator of the sales potential for your business developers. But in addition to having, of course, I, I don't want to any lawyers listening to this think that this is the magic recipe. They have a high SSI and they're going to get all these opportunities. Your firms also have to have the right sales enablement tools. You have to have the right training in place. And most important of all, the right process for tracking and measuring how your business development activities are affecting firm revenue. So I will post in the 
comments following this live, a link where you can go on and check your own SSI score. You just have to be logged into your LinkedIn account. You can click that link and you should be able to find your SSI score. From what I can tell, you do not need to have a Sales Navigator subscription in order to be able to see it. I tested it with my team at Lisi and only a couple of us actually have a Navigator subscription and the folks who didn't were able to go in and see their um, SSI score. So check it out, see what you're at. Um, one last note about SSI from everything I'm reading a score of um, 70 or above really helps kick your reach and your potential for uh, reaching people beyond your first degree network in terms of your posts and your content. It really takes that to the next level. And then a score of 90 and above um, kicks that into overdrive. This is my score here on the screen. I am at a 75 currently. Again, if you know me, you know that I'm very competitive. So now that I know about SSI and now that I know the impact it has, I work every day for a few minutes a day on, on improving my profile, on you know honing my content and my skills with engaging on LinkedIn and using the platform for searching to find the right connections, hopefully to help boost my SSI score. Next thing I want to talk about, uh, again, from that presentation is the truth about social media and SEO. I was invited by um, Catherine, Rivera, Catherine Rivera and Megan Spraulding, who are the LMA, Legal Marketing Association, Digital and Social Media Shared Interest Group chairs a few weeks ago to present last week on what you wish you knew about social media and SEO, as I mentioned earlier. And um, you know, in our planning session, we had this interesting conversation, you know, of course, social media affects SEO. And we sort of went back and forth. And um, they challenged some of my thinking about what that connection is and caused me to do a deep dive into research. Um, and I can state for the record that yes, social media and SEO have a relationship, but they are not um, directly connected. And here's why. So, so links posted on social media are actually, they don't count as backlinks to your website. So a backlink is that link posted on a third party site links to your website, helps improve your site's domain authority, helps improve your site's relevance in the eyes of search engine crawlers. Links posted, when I share a link on LinkedIn, it is not necessarily a um a backlink, it's actually listed as a no follow link. And a no follow link does not count as a point in that page's favor. It doesn't help boost page rank. It doesn't help boost a page's placement in search engine results pages. Again, one quote I read said, no follow links get no love. But there is a relationship because of the um, interaction people have with that content. If you're posting quality content, if you if they decide to then engage with you, that traffic is really that that relationship connection between social media and SEO. And we could go, I could spend, you know, 45 minutes like I did last week talking about that, but high level, you want to, you, you're you're using social media for the brand visibility. You're using social media so people want to interact with your content, expect and recognize your content, but those backlinks are not helping improve your page rank. However, another big takeaway, social profiles, so my LinkedIn profile, for example, might show up in search engine results. So I've got keywords, I've got descriptors throughout my um, LinkedIn profile or other social media profiles, truth be told. And those profiles themselves might show up in search engine results pages. And here's the thing that if you don't listen to anything else I'm saying today, I want you to hear this. Social profiles are 85% more likely to be viewed than your firm's website. There's some reasons for that. The website is a marketing piece. People going to your website, they understand it is what you, your firm, is saying about the firm, and it's everything you know that you want to be saying from your perspective. But social profiles have an opportunity for third-party validation, that social proof component. You know, if there are reviews left on those profiles, and it also might just feel like the interaction on those profiles is more organic and natural and real. And you're again, you're actually connecting potentially with a person as a opposed to a marketing department. So keep that in mind. Your social profiles do really matter. It's important to optimize them for search, and it's important to optimize them because when people find you in search or when people are looking at your profiles, which they're more likely to do, they um, you want them to really understand who it is, or excuse me, who you are, uh, what you do, and what it might be like to know you and to work with you. So big takeaway from that presentation. And the last thing I want to talk about is Apple iOS 15, which is rolling out, starting to roll out today, and its impact on email marketing. 
So there are a few elements that you should be aware of. I am sure that many of the digital marketers who are tuned in right now have already heard about this and are already thinking about the implications for their team. But in case you just heard about it recently, like truth be told, I myself did just a, a few weeks ago, um, here's what you need to know about it. A big component of the new operating system is something called mail privacy protection, which is going to prevent brands from knowing whether a user opens one of their emails and it's going to hide the IP address, though, it's so that a sender can't link that action to other activity or determine um, a user's location. It's also going to mask um, our IP addresses um, overall. So this is great for us as individuals. I'd like to not be tracked, um, you know, <laughs> but also it's not so great for us as marketers. Um, also, quick side note, there's going to be a new iCloud Plus paid service that is going to have a hide my email option, which is an address cloaking feature so that you can basically put in, um, it will allow you to provide a fake email address when you're putting things in online. Um, that, it, that component though is, is a paid service. So, but the biggest takeaway is email marketers are going to need to focus even more heavily on creating really outstanding content. I mean, if you think about it, if we take a step back from this one action, we've been saying this for years, honestly, you know, you don't just want to spray and pray. I say all the time, you want to find the right content for the right audience at the right time. And that's really going to become even more important now because you want people to, you're not just going to measure your effectiveness of your email campaigns by opens, which, you know, has a sort of sorted history in terms of its really its value as a metric, you want to measure the effectiveness of your email um, and marketing campaigns related to interaction, conversions, people who are actually clicking those links and taking actions on your website. So those are my three things this week. I do have one bonus one. I love to throw in a bonus three or thing I learned last week um, every so often. If you are not watching Ted Lasso, please go out and watch Ted Lasso. Please go out and get Apple Plus if you don't have it, even if it's just for a trial. I binge watched the entire series last week. Um, I don't know how I found the time. I think I didn't sleep whatsoever last week, but it is really, it's just a joy filled show. I think it's really fantastic. If you've heard people talking about it and you haven't gotten on the bandwagon yet, I highly encourage you to get on the bandwagon. That is everything I have to share with you today. Like I said, I'm going to put a couple of resources in the links following the live. Please feel free to reach out um, to me. If you're not following me on LinkedIn, please go ahead and, and follow me. And I would love to hear from you. If you have ideas for things that you want to hear about, things you'd like me to do all the research on and learn about and come share with the audience, I'm, I'm game. Please send me a message. And um, I can't wait to talk to you next week. Have a great week. Thanks, everybody. Oh, 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 oh,